Welcome back, folks, to the Via Pinstriping page. Um, if you are a new visitor to the page, please subscribe. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much for watching. So today we're going to be using the Kafka number no. one scroller, uh, Kansas City teal one shot, and a glass practice board that I got from one uh, from Walmart. If you're curious about these practice boards. Just look on my page. Um, I have a kind of a tutorial on where to find them, how, how to find them, and whatnot. All right, so simple pinstriping design number, who knows? But we're going to get after it. So I've been straying away from the teardrops for a little bit because people are always looking for something other than a teardrop. But you know what? You're getting a teardrop today. So a closed teardrop. So you just push down in the beginning to get that teardrop shape and then you lift up as you go. Something like that. <clears throat> if by chance you start to waver either way, you can kind of fake it and go along the edges, fix whichever side looks funny to you, if in case it does. Careful though, because if you're already messing up that early in the design, just wipe it off, start over. It's an easy point to redo. <clears throat> All right, so now what we're going to do is uh, C curve this, that's going to start here and end over here. It's going to go kind of downward. So right there, go across the middle, and end. And we're just going to go underneath it, starting where it starts, kind of follow underneath it, and then meet up right back with it. <clears throat> now keep in mind, when you have stuff like that that's open on the inside, that could lead to another color, a filling of another color if you want later on. But because these are simple designs, um, we're just going to keep it simple. So, um, now what we're going to do is kind of a C-curve going out and then back in. But it's going to get sort of exaggerated. So, inward, outward, and then back in. So, an S-curve in essence, but it's kind of tilted. And try to follow the same lines over here. That's why we have the grid drawn on the back of the glass. Inward, outward, try to meet up in the same kind of area, same points, and then back in. Sorry about my squeaky chair. One day I'll buy a new one. So I'm just going to kind of make that a little bit longer because it was shorter than this one. And now we're just going to do an arch, slight C curve, just connecting the, the two lines there. You always want to have your lines, if you can. I mean, it really depends on the design because I've seen designs that look fine without this rule, but... You always want to try to have lines that have some sort of ending point. Like both of these are just open, floating out in the wind. So what we're going to do is turn them into arrows. So we start just a little bit away from the line. Run along with it until it meets back up with it. Right? Same thing over here. Run alongside with the design and then meet back into it. And then we connect them like an arrow. The line going from the original line to the new one. And they are kind of going backwards a little bit, so it makes them look sharper. All right now we're going to do an upward C curve. So something that goes upwards. Thank you. 
another C curve that's going to go really close to the line there, but it's not going to touch it. So very close. Then outward. Very close. Outward. Now we're going to connect this. It's another slight C curve to that bottom of the line. Right there. Once again, slight C curve connecting to the bottom of this line here. And then we're going to go out. Very nice, long, exaggerated line. And uh, I would normally go this way, starting here and go out, but I don't want to get in the way of the camera, so I'm going to do it backwards. Um, this is not the recommended way I would, like I said, go from here out, but I don't want to stick my head in front of the camera, so. Sometimes, because of the angles and where you're at, you got to do some funny stuff. And I think we're going to turn these into arrows. Just like the other ones, so run a line next to it where it meets. Same thing over here. Try to try to get the same gap. See where the gap starts and where it ends and the thickness. So the gap seems to start about right here. And it ends, I don't know, a quarter inch away from the other line. So see if we can do this. Right there, like, like that. <clears throat> now we're going to close these off to turn them into arrows. And there you go. Now you don't have a, just the line floating anywhere. It's connected back into itself. You can always give it a double line, which makes it look a little bit more finished, in my opinion. I don't know. Maybe not. You can give these a double line if you'd like. Just kind of gives it a little square kind of a cap there at the beginning of the arrow. I don't know why, but to me they look, always make it look a little more finished. And then if you'd like to elongate that and kind of just make it a little longer, you can always press here and start another, another teardrop shape. To make this go a little longer. And we'll just continue just a little bit. I'm going to come from the point here and just go downward with a C curve. Like that. And I'll turn those into arrows. Just like we did all the other ones. Close them off. And there you have it, folks. Another simple pinstriping design. Um... I didn't have much of an outline on this one, I just went for it, and hopefully it's uh, different enough from the other ones to where it makes a difference. And <clears throat> thanks again for watching. Um, remember that you can always elaborate on these as much as you'd like. 
and uh, if not just or you can make it more simple if you'd like just kind of follow some of the some of the lines and I much appreciate y'all watching the videos and I'll see you on the next one have a good day